Okay, let's look at another problem. This one's going to be pretty similar. But let's write out a strategy first for how to actually deal with these. So the first step that I mentioned above is that if you see parentheses and your variable is within them, you should distribute. So let me write that down. So if we see parentheses, we're just going to distribute. And then we're solving for x. So our next step will be collect all x terms on one side. So we'll collect all x terms on one side of the equation. And then the step after that, let me change colors here. We're going to remove any non x term and put it on the other side. So in other words, we're going to move all non x terms to the other side. And once all the non x terms are moved to the other side, then we're going to have an expression where we're going to need to factor out x. So let me write that down. So our next step is to factor out x, then divide by the coefficient, whatever it is. So this is our main strategy. Distribute the parentheses, collect all the x terms on one side, move everything else that's not an x to the other side, and then factor it out, and then divide by that coefficient. So let's put this into practice. So the first step is to distribute here. So you get 17n plus nx equals 34x minus r. So we distributed. Now we got to collect all the x's on one side. And you can move them to either side. I'll move them to the left. So to do that, we will subtract 34x on each side. So you get nx minus 34x plus 17n equals negative r. And... Now that all the x's are on one side, we can move on to our third step here. We want to move all non-x terms, so that's the 17n, to the other side. So we are going to do the opposite. We will subtract 17n on each side. So you get nx minus 34x equals minus r minus 17n. And now step four, notice we have our x's together, but we can't combine their coefficients in a meaningful way. So we have to factor out the x, and then whatever that expression is, divide through by that. So with factoring, we notice both of them have an x term in it. So we can factor that out. Or essentially, we're dividing both of those terms by x. And dividing this by x, you'd be left with n. Dividing this by x, you'd be left with negative 34. And the right-hand side is still the same, minus r minus 17n. And you check to make sure it worked by doing the distribution process. So we do x times n, which is nx, and x times negative 34, which is minus 34x. So our factoring worked. We checked it. And then now we just have x times by this number. And we don't know what n is, but we know it's a number. You know, if n was 40 then we'd have 40 minus 34, which would be 6, or 6 times x. And we would have to divide through by that 6. But since we don't know what n is, we're going to have to leave it generally. But we can divide by that n minus 34. So let me rewrite all that. We have x times n minus 34, and we're going to divide both sides by n minus 34. So you have minus r minus 17n over n minus 34. And something divided by itself is always equal to 1. So then x would just be equal to this right-hand side. So we'll do that problem next. But for now, I just want to finish this off by writing that x would be minus r minus 17n over n minus 34. So we followed our strategy, and we were able to get an answer. Your answer is going to be usually a complicated expression here that x is equal to. We're not going to get a specific value, but that's okay for these. So when you're solving these problems, it's a good idea to have this strategy written out for you so that you can always reference it if you need it. So now let's try and solve this last one here. And in this case, we're solving for z. Let me just make some room. So we need to figure out what z is equal to. So we see parentheses, so let's distribute to start. 
So you get minus 51p minus pz equals dz plus 84. And now we want to get all our z terms together. And as always, it doesn't matter which side you move them to, but I'm going to move them over here so that we get all positive terms. You don't have to. You can move them to the left, and they just would have negative coefficients, and that would be fine. But students tend to make mistakes when there are negatives involved. So if we can avoid them, it's typically the better route. So to cancel out this minus PZ, so I can move it over here, I'm going to add PZ on each side. So you get minus 51P equals DZ plus PZ plus 84. So we got our Zs together, but now we got to get rid of this plus 84. So we got to move all non-X terms, or non-Z terms in this case, to the other side. So subtract 84 to cancel out that addition. So you get minus 51P minus 84. Let me rewrite that. So minus 84 equals DZ plus PZ. And now we've got two terms with Z in it, but we don't know their coefficients, so we'll just have to factor. And so... I'll just rewrite the left, minus 51p minus 84. We'll factor a z out here. And when factoring, we're essentially just dividing each of these two terms by z. And so we'd be left with d plus p on the inside. And you can check it by redistributing that you get dz plus pz, which you do. And our last step is to divide by this coefficient on z. So let me just rewrite this. We got minus 51p minus 84. Let me scroll over a little. Equals z times d plus p. So that's what we'll divide by on both sides by the d plus p. You could write it p plus d, but I'll just keep it consistent. So d plus p on each side. And we know something divided by itself is just 1. So solving for z, what we got is minus 51p minus 84, all divided by d plus p. So this is our final answer. So with any other questions like these, if you follow the strategy and you feel proficient with solving normal linear equations, just solving them for a specific number, then this is really just the next step in difficulty. But... In a lot of ways, these types of linear equations are the most important to learn because when you get into higher levels of science, you're going to be given formulas where everything is in terms of different letters. You're not going to have numbers that you're solving for. You'll just be given a formula in letters. You know, maybe something like uh, the universal law of gravity, which is big G, M1, M2 all over R squared where we have this formula for gravity, but everything is in terms of letters. And at different points, I can give you maybe mass one or mass two, or I can give you the distance between those masses. But in a lot of these, you're going to have to rearrange the equation just dealing with letters rather than with numbers. So just something to think about going forward that this skill is particularly useful in science.